Okay, guys, let's get right into the stock market technical analysis. We're going to just get into what I'm seeing. Obviously, everyone's foaming at the mouth bullish. I've seen a lot of comments. A lot of the bears are capitulating and bulls are just foaming at the mouth. So understand that, you know, corrections don't come from the depths, you know, from big drops. Corrections come when everyone's on one side of the trade. So market sentiment, understand that. Now let's look at the technicals because at the end of the day, that's really how I base my trades is not on how I feel, not on how other people feel, but rather on how the charts look, not on how much, you know, not on how much uh, losses, uh, you know, I'm taking on or, or in general, as long as the trade looks good and the technicals look good, I usually can stick with the trade. And that's what I want to show you guys. So on triple Q's, um, we still have negative divergence right there now it's not confirmed understand that when i go down you know when you look at the uh, ppo and the rsi the ppo is pointed straight up you know it's pointed upward so in order to confirm the negative divergence you would need to see this start to turn over and make a bearish crossover that's what i'll be looking for that's what you need to have that in order to confirm that divergence if we don't get that and we just continue to rally we're going to burn through the divergence and it won't be there anymore and that would be very bullish just to see that. I don't think that's going to happen. I'll show you guys why. But as of right now, this high is made on less momentum. Okay, we're making a new high on less momentum on the RSI and the PPO on the daily chart. So that is uh, that remains, you know, that remains true right there. Let's look at the Nasdaq futures. Here's the same look: new high on a Friday, end of the month. Okay, you've got you've got the you know you've got people looking to catch their quarterly bonuses. That's what it looks like. So they're ramping the market up into the quarter end of the quarter. Uh, you've got negative divergence on the RSI and the PPO, not confirmed. Again, we need to see confirmation. That's uh, we definitely need to see that. I'll be looking for that next week, <clears throat> making a new higher higher high in price and lower high in momentum. Divergences have a high probability of failing. No guarantees, but that's uh, you know typically how I look to trade. Okay, here's why I think we're not going to burn through the divergences. And in fact, I think we're at the top of the market right here and now. Okay, closing out today, I could tell today they were gonna continue to ramp it up and probably close it at the highs or near the highs. Uh, and here's what I was looking at. Let's go to my FANG stocks. I can roll through these and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm looking at. We're gonna start off with Apple. Apple's the biggest stock in the market. And today, you know, we opened the day right there, all right? And I could see that there was still a little more potential for some upside right up into this 165 area, all right? We have now ramped right up in there and we are basically at major resistance. If I roll out on the daily, look what I got. Here's your bear market, all right? Since we, ever since Apple has been selling down, you've got a high, you've got resistance, you've got resistance, and we're there right there, all right? So I know a lot of people are foaming at the mouth bullish and that's because they chase price action. They just see the price going up and they are bullish when the price goes up. And when the price goes down, they're bearish. But that's not how you make money. On the, you know, you have to make money anticipating the next move. If the market continues higher from here, then the bulls make money and the bears, you know, lose. But this to me looks like a very objective area to short. If I went, rolled back here and just think, you know, let's just put yourself in the position of maybe you were right here, all right? Maybe you started shorting Apple right there, okay? And you had a couple weeks basically where the price was still going against you. The bulls were foaming at the mouth, the bears were in pain. We ran right into that resistance. If you, you know, and not to say that there's no reason to necessarily short right there, but if you did, you could see that the risk reward was to the downside, all right? Shorting here, you had potential for a 6% upside. Shorting right here, the downside that came followed, you know, the downside that followed, even if you take it down to here, 17, 18% downside, all right? Ultimately down to 24% downside. A lot more risk to the downside than there was to the upside. So at the end of the day, the swing traders, if you were bearish, even if you shorted right there, which is a bad spot to short, you would have made more money, you know, and likely most of the bulls would have lost money, all right? So again, you want to be buying and bullish down here when you have divergent lows like this, all right? And you want to be shorting or, you know, getting out of trades into resistance, all right? And there we are right there. So again, that's why I have to stick with the trade. That's Apple. 
at major resistance. Let's look at Amazon. Amazon, gone nowhere, all right? Resistance, I've had this line marked out, 102.75. Now, yeah, they could pop it to the 200. I don't think we're gonna get it. We've had this island reversal, and that still holds. We've got this resistance level, all right? There's support, there's resistance, and there it is right there. It's held there pretty much all day. Amazon's gone nowhere, right at resistance. Apple, right at resistance. Let's look at Google. Okay, Google, again, here's your downtrend line. All the bulls are foaming at the mouth bullish because the triple Qs is rallying. What they don't realize is it's rallying with negative divergence right into major resistance. They're likely gonna wake up to uh, maybe a gap down on Monday. I don't know if it's gonna be like that, but I think next week is the week where we get a big reversal. Likely gonna gap down. Usually you don't allow the bulls to just get out. Usually you're gonna trap them and the way the gaps are usually what do that. So on Google, resistance, resistance, resistance. All right, we popped it briefly, but you know, that failed. Let me kind of clean that up just so everyone can see. All right, propped it briefly failed and today rallying just right back into resistance. All right, Google's gonna close at resistance. Apple's gonna close at resistance. Amazon's gonna close at resistance. Let's look up Meta. Meta, all right, Meta's kinda got this little bearish rising wedge thing going on. I think there's some resistance right there at about 203-ish. Um, it's not the cleanest line, um, but we do have this bearish rising wedge building. We've got negative divergence and we're basically just at the top end of that bearish wedge. So if I zoom in on Meta, it's starting to get that bearish crossover. All right, so again, that's a that's a bearish looking chart. And again, I don't wanna be going long or ultimately even staying long into a big bearish pattern when you have negative divergence and you're at resistance, all right? So Microsoft, now Microsoft is you know relatively strong. I can see some support and you know kind of a, uh, there's support right there former resistance, looks like they're rallying it up uh, today. This rally, if it rolls over anytime soon, is gonna be a divergent high. So as I zoom in, you can see still making a new higher high on lower momentum. Let's look at the RSI. RSI, you know, right there, you still have kind of negative divergence. Basically, you can make it right there too. New higher high in price, lower momentum. So. All right, that's it. Now, Microsoft doesn't necessarily have resistance right here. We're just slightly above it. That one looks a little different, but still have that negative divergence. And again, if Apple and Amazon and Google and Meta, if they're all at major resistance and they all start to sell off, Microsoft's going with them. And then let's look at Google, which is another uh, the other class of Alphabet shares. You can see um, resistance, 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 popped it briefly, failed, and that's where we're at. So as bullish as today seems, we have, we're, we've just rallied right into resistance on all the major FANG stocks, okay? And again, negative divergence. Let's look at, look at the PPO here. Starting to turn down, you've got negative divergence starting to turn down. You just need to see that crossover to help confirm. All right, I think that comes next week. So yeah, again, that's why I stick with the trade, guys, because I just, there's, you know, the chart tells me that it's, this is a good shorting opportunity. Again, you, you know, what happens and the way that, you know, most people act is when things are ripping to the upside, everybody's bullish. And when things are crashing, everybody's bearish. I typically am looking to be on the other side because what I want to do is I want to short at resistance before the crash or before a big move down just like I want to buy at support before everybody else jumps on the trade and starts chasing it upward. And that's essentially how we're looking to trade this. So that's what I got on the broad market. Okay guys, if you're finding value in the content, please drop me a thumbs up. If you're bearish today, then maybe you don't feel like you're finding value, but we'll see how next week plays out and how the next coming weeks play out. All right, I have a feeling that I'm gonna be right on this one, although I haven't been right this week. Again, this is swing trading. I'm not looking to be right tomorrow or today. I'm looking to be right in the next few weeks and I'm looking to be right big, all right? I'm not looking to you know, call the price action every single day and get it right day to day. I'm looking to get positioned in swing trades for the next move, the next major move. And that's what I think I'm doing. So again, I'm sticking with my conviction on the, on the short trade on triple Qs. Um, gold, all right, so gold futures kind of muddling around. This one, uh, GDX, I did point this out to the private member group. 
still trade still relatively uh, decent. You can see here on GDX hourly chart, negative divergence on the hourly, bearish rising wedge, and a breakdown, all right? Kind of they're flagging it out right now, so who knows? Maybe they flag it out and continue lower, but I see GD GDX probably selling off in the near future. Uh, the levels that I have, the first one, I've got about 3075 as the first level. And yeah, we'll just watch that. So I think we're heading lower in gold, um, at least a correction. Um, I don't exactly know exactly where, but we'll we'll kind of watch that. But for now, I'm looking for a correction in gold and probably another 4%, maybe down to about 7.5% down in the GDX broad-based uh, mining ETF. Okay, NVIDIA, another uh, major player in the triple Qs, but also the semiconductors, NVIDIA. Bearish rising wedge on the daily chart. All right, I've kind of adjusted my, my lower line just to make a cleaner wedge. We still have a bearish rising wedge, all right? That's a wedge. We have negative divergence on the daily. We have um, we have a, a, a resistance line right here at about 284.50, so just a little bit above. I've got it right now at about, oh, 2% or so above, but you can see that's kind of a former reaction area where we had that right there. So close enough, you know, I don't want to play games with the last 2% where I think it's, this thing's about to sell down. Um, and so close enough for me to say that I think that's, you know, minimal upside, guys. I, I You know, obviously there could be some more upside, but I think there's minimal upside there. Let's look at the P, you can see the uh, PPO started to turn down, but they're so far holding it. So again, you need to see that bearish crossover. That's really going to help firm up the uh, the case and that will likely come with a drop you know maybe a gap down on Monday or, or Tuesday or something I don't exactly know Monday might be just I don't it's really hard to call but I do think there's gonna be a gap down all right it just is too easy if it just starts to roll over and lets everyone out all right I does doesn't mean the gaps gonna be on Monday maybe it's I think sometime next week there's likely gonna be a gap down Okay, that's really all I have for the video today. I'm gonna to go ahead and get this one out there. If you're in the private member group, you already know that what my conviction is and where I'm looking to trade. And if you're not in the private member group, then you're gonna get this information after the market closes. So again, join the private member group if you wanna have uh, actionable insights. Link in the description below. Finally, take my technical analysis course. Again, you know, trading is not about being right the moment that you take a position, all right? It's about being right in the general trend of things, okay? I mean, if you're day trading, fine, but we're not day trading. So here we look to take a position. Positions don't always just go our way the moment we take them. We, As long as the technicals remain solid, we stick with the trade and we, uh, we let that trade play out. So looking for some downside guys next week uh, and I will catch you on the next one, bye.